helping bring together. Um, and yes, I I did rewrite some carols to make them more vaccine task force specific to, to I think, just bring a little bit of humour, lightheartedness, allow people virtually to connect with each other in a non-work way. Because doing that in most work environments, you, you meet up for drinks or you might go for a coffee, you might do a lunch. Sometimes, you know, you have bespoke functions. Uh, and I think it's an important part of helping a team gel by having conversations away from the workplace where you understand people a little bit more and they relax. Uh, and that then helps create a, quite a conducive connectivity and atmosphere within the team when you're working. Um, and yeah, so we did. So it was part of the vaccine task force, put a lot of effort into thinking about making the vaccine task force a better place to work, about our health and well-being, um, recognising the pressures people were under living in lockdown, um, you know, living with the, the fear of COVID uh, and what that meant to everybody at the same time as, as the very real pressures and demands of the work we were doing, really, really long hours, really, really intense hours, a, a real pressure on individuals having that sense of responsibility of the part and the role they had to play. So I saw the humour, you know, so that carol, that little pre-Christmas carol thing was just one of the things that we did to try and help people connect and support each other. It's really easy to overlook those little gestures of kindness and camaraderie, but I think creating an environment where they can happen is as much a part of leadership as big picture strategy and organisation. Many people at top levels of government, pharmaceuticals and other industries that we dealt with were, however effective, a slightly more traditional picture of leadership in terms of demographic. But on reflection, certainly when I was leading on the NHS side of the design and planning and with government, I realised actually it was four women across the BTF with Ruth and Joe in Public Health England and Emma in Department of Health. Being surrounded by really clever, assertive women meant that we really built trust very quickly and communicated so effectively. Would that have been different if there'd been a more diverse mix in the picture? I genuinely don't know, but it was a really positive experience working with such dynamic women and everyone really did put their egos aside. We just worked so collaboratively together and I felt complete trust from the outset. I felt we really had each other's backs, especially when we were presenting in ministerial meetings. It was mutually supportive. If we were facing a challenge, we could raise it and try to problem solve together, even if it was irrelevant to the rest of the group. It was a really genuinely special experience. Looking back, you're right, Tessa. We had a really special combination of people who worked brilliantly together in leadership and across the task force. I think when we talk about leadership, what we're often really talking about when it comes down to it is building trust. Here's Ollie on trust as a key factor in delivering as quickly and seamlessly as possible when you're juggling 10 different stakeholders and have little time to lose. I think the vaccine, I think the whole vaccines and vaccination program only really work because of um, the, those the trusted relationships that built between those different organisations and the way those different organisations work at all different, you know, all different levels. So you, know, you can see, look at the very classic interface between the vaccine task force, the one we, we we're working on, and the NHS vac um, vaccination programme. And um, there really had to be just hand in glove work between those organisations. Absolute trust that what we were doing, you know, we, we were we were we were bringing that vaccine in to deliver to them, and that you know, they were going to be ready to deliver it as soon as it was delivered. And you know, there had to be sort of really tight interfaces. So for me, that's. Uh, that is a really sort of key key lesson, and there's something that we developed through there. And I think hopefully, you know, other government programs will take forward. I certainly hope so. At times of crisis, we learn a lot about ourselves, what works and what doesn't. And there are so many lessons I think we can explore about why this vaccine task force was ultimately a success. Thanks for listening, and goodbye for now. We look forward to sharing the next episode of the Gift of the Jab with you soon. <laughs>